Hello, this is Klaus Jensen presenting a recent game which is very special to me because this was the game that secured me my first international master norm on ICCF. It does take two norms and a fixed rating over 2300 to become international master on ICCF. And I'm currently rated uh, 2370 or something. Um, so it was a major step towards the title to get my first norm in this game. And the game in, wi in which it happened, uh, or the decisive game, is the one you're about to watch. And it was actually a quite nice game for me. First and foremost, it uh, gave me the norm, but uh, it was also one from the black side of the board. And that's not very usual on uh, ICCF. So in almost every aspect, this is a very nice game for me. My opponent in this game was uh, rated uh, 2330, and he opened uh, E4. And um, we had a uh, Sicilian Night Elf. Um, I play the knight off from time to time, I try to switch a little between many systems, but um, I play the knight off and um, my opponent play bishop e3, e5, knight b3, bishop e6, and with f3 he, uh, he starts the so-called English attack, which was popular, popular, yeah it's still popular, but it was uh, made popular in the 80s by a number of uh, English grandmasters in the 80s and the 90s. The idea is to play uh, Queen D2, Castle Long, play G4, play for a kingside attack. And the most effective antidote against this English attack system was uh, made popular by uh, Tupalov. He did surely not invent the next move um, and the system behind it, but he he played the move uh, at several occasions and he has been um, developing the system behind the next move and the strongest move in this position which surely is h5 which is countering the g4 move immediately but as we shall see in the game there is a much more uh, to the move than just preventing g4 the most popular move here is knight d5 another possibility could be to play queen d2 um, and castle but knight d5 is the most popular move and the move that my opponent played Bishop takes d5, e takes d, knight bd7, queen d2. And the key strategical goal objective uh, for black in this position is to exchange his dark squared bishop sorry, um, for this uh, bishop. We, he needs to get rid of these uh, bishops because the black bishop is restrained by his own central pawns and uh, the white bishop is quite good and if black succeeds in exchanging these uh, bishops it will make uh, the rest of the game much easier for him. So therefore the accurate move in this position is g6. My opponent castled and now you could say a, a very principled uh, continuation here is to play knight g8, intending bishop h6 immediately. But unfortunately it could uh, be met by the annoying here g4, if bishop h6 then g5. And now the black bishop here is, is having a hard time. He had to go to g7, play e4 at some point, but yeah. So this is not... Um, so good. So in first place here we play knight b6 to put pressure on d5 and effectively force white to allow this bishop exchange because he has to defend this pawn and he could of course do so by playing c4 here then would follow rook c8 to pin the c pawn in the c file pin to the king um, knight would go to a5 to defend the pawn and we could take here and if bishop g5 then follows a lot of exchanges and this bishop h6 comes and black succeeds in uh, exchanging the dark squared bishops and if we see here three six pawns three six pawns um, this should be fairly balanced um, um, but it is of course an, a possibility for white to play c4 it was a long variation here, but he played the uh, knight a5 instead, 
which is also defending the pawn uh, because the rook is now defending also um, but now comes bishop h6 and white can do no better than to exchange play king b1 king f8 black's whole plan of exchanging these bishops and uh, he now has to uh, castle artificially and uh, he has to rearrange his rook is quite slow but um, it, 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 it is so that white cannot really do anything unpleasant in the meantime um, he played g3 in the game uh, I don't really understand this move but um, he struggles to find a plan then came uh, knight b d7 he retreats his queen to d2 and uh, I go king g7 I have to put my king here, rook back here um, knight a5 queen c7 and knight c4 rook back to the 8th rank and now he plays knight e3 and this knight maneuver has now prepared uh, him to play g4 but why did he then play g3 in the first place? That's a uh, waste of move. But um, never mind. b5 here. And then came his g4. I went knight b6. He went g5. Knight back to d7. f4. And this is of course a way to try to open some open the black king position somewhat um, and if I had uh, let's say rook to c8 here then f5 could be a little bit dangerous give uh, white some play knight c5 f takes f takes something like this bishop h3 could give white some counter play in the f file has a nice square uh, on e6 where I could be forced to give up uh, my knight and so on so perhaps this would give white some uh, counterplay so I would not allow f5 so I played e takes f4 he gave a check on d4 knight on the nice square e5 blocking the check queen takes f4 now I can play my rook to an open file he goes bishop e2 I go back because there will be a check on f6 in many lines, so it has to go anyway. And he played rook d4. <coughs> and then um, now um, the other rook to the other open file. And we can say here, uh, evaluating th this, that it's an interesti interesting position. Uh, both kings are looking slightly vulnerable. Black is, of course, uh, having an eye on c2 and uh, white putting a rook in the f file could have a, a, an eye on f7 there's a weak square on f6 could be occupied by a knight at, at some point and um, white could possibly also uh, consider a, a sack on h5 in some lines but um, the major difference is perhaps that black can push his pawns against the white king white cannot push his pawns it's, it's static on the, on the king side so that's perhaps the major difference. Another small smaller difference is that all the black pieces are, are very well placed, uh, while uh, the white rook here is struggling struggling to find a, a good square, and um, perhaps the bishop here is also not too well placed. Also, the knight is missing some good squares. So there are uh, many imbalan imbalances in in the position at this point. Rook f1 is logical to apply, apply pressure on f7 and I played knight a4 here threatening uh, knight takes b2 in some variations if for example for example here c3 then knight takes b2 king takes queen takes king back rook e7 is looking dangerous for and suddenly the white king is very exposed he didn't play c3, he played a3. I played rook e7 to defend this f7 pawn, giving my queen, um, allowing my queen to to move, not ha ha having to uh, defend f7. King, king
came to a2 and um, I played queen c5. Now what should uh, white do here? He cannot really actively do anything against my king at this point. He could of course sack on h5 but I don't think it's working. But in the game he played uh, this ugly move I think uh, rook b4. It's an ugly square for a rook in front of the enemy uh, pawns and of course it does prevent uh, a5 now because then rook takes b4 b5 sorry but um, this is very short term and um, after knight b6 threatening d5 he went back to d4 and then came a5 anyway and now perhaps the desperate bishop takes h5 here is the best chance I don't think black can take uh, here because then knight f5 and then um, if uh, rook goes then knight is eight yeah knight check here and uh, then it's not so pleasant for for black all of a sudden so perhaps not no not take here but uh, perhaps just play uh, b4 continue with the plans bishop can go back having grabbed the pawn but um, with rook b8 next rook can go to c7 perhaps I don't know but uh, again white having grabbed this pawn on h5 uh, is of, of course uh, good but uh, black is still having the initiative on the, on the queen side but it was definitely uh, an option but he played c3 and um, I played my knight back to a4 he went back to d1 to defend b2 and c3 and rook b8 and we can we can say that black is completely dictating the game at this point then he went knight f2 and now came the break b4 if he takes with the a pawn then a takes and if c takes queen c2 queen has to go back then th there's the nice knight c3 check if he takes with the queen then we can go rook a7 queen has to go between here we can take here and there's a checkmate has to go between with the bishop but that won't help him so a takes b4 is losing and if c takes b4 queen c2 queen d2 then we can take here take here and then we reach a position like this and after a move like knight c5 here then there's threats uh, again there's ma made threats here actually because uh, if a knight goes to b3 and a rook check on a7 then there could be a, a checkmate on a1 and again this is uh, better for, for for black so we cannot really take the pawn on b4 he went knight e4 instead and um, this is of course threatening the queen but now comes a very nice move which is b takes c3 and he cannot take the queen because then comes rook takes b2 king a1 knight takes c5 yeah there's a threat of a uh, mate here he has to go bishop d1 rook e to b7 queen back knight e to d3 and black has sacked the queen but he has a crushing attack and white has to give back the queen actually he has to go queen takes b2 rook takes but again if something like yeah there's a lot of threats here I have put some arrows here um, if for example f4 then uh, simply knight c1 with a check made threat on, uh, on b3 and he cannot really do anything about it um, so 
he cannot take the queen. So after b4, uh, sorry, he after b takes c3, he played b4. And then I went queen b6. Of course, I cannot take here. Then the queen would be hanging. So I have to go back here. And now he wisely tries to close the b file, play b5. My knight came back to c5. He took the pawn on c3. I played rook c8. He went king b2 to defend the knight. I went a4, rook c1. And now it's all about the c file. Um, had he played knight takes a4 here, then knight c4 check, bishop takes, and then I can take on a4 first, king b3, and then take on c4. If he takes, then there's a check here. And actually this is also winning because the white king is in all kinds of trouble. So um, he didn't take, he played rook c1 and um, then came king queen b7, rook c2, rook e2 c7, building up strong pressure in the in the c file. He played rook d1, queen a7, queen b4, knight c to d7, queen back to d4. I played queen a5. Now the, the poor knight is really under pressure and is pinned because it, the rook on uh, c2 is also hanging. He c came back here and then I exchanged the queens because now I could play knight c4 check. He took, I took, still a lot of pressure in the c file. Rook uh, e1 took the pawn here, went back to the c file. He went rook e3 to defend the knight. I played knight b6, rook d3 to defend the pawn. And white is simply all tied up here. He his his knight is pinned. Um, his rook has to defend the pawn on d5, and um, yeah, there's nothing, not much he can do. He can only wait for for me to uh, to progress, um, and therefore he actually decided to uh, to resign the game in this uh, very position. And he wrote to me that he was happy to be, be the first to congratulate me on my first international master norm, and I thanked him for a very exciting game. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on my chess website at uh, klausjensen.com. Bye bye for now.